Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rubiul. I work as a lecturer in pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is Kleinfelter syndrome part 1. This video will contain introduction to Kleinfelter syndrome followed by brief discussion about its definition, incidence, karyotypes and pathogenesis. Then in the second part of this series, we will finish our discussion by talking about the clinical features, diagnosis and management of Kleinfelter syndrome. Okay, a lot of topics, so let's begin. First question, what do we mean by Kleinfelter syndrome? It is a genetic disorder and it is one of the most common causes of hypogonadism in the male individuals. It occurs due to presence of two or more X chromosomes and one or more Y chromosome. Recall that a normal male individual has 46 chromosomes and among them there is one X chromosome and one Y chromosome and the karyotype of a normal male individual is written as 46 XY. But in case of Kleinfelter syndrome, there is presence of two or more X chromosomes and one or more Y chromosomes in the individual. And in 90% of the cases, the karyotype of an individual with Kleinfelter syndrome will be 47 XXY. Now, if we can compare the karyotype of a normal individual with this karyotype of an individual with Kleinfelter syndrome, we can see that there is presence of an extra copy of X chromosome. And sometimes there may be presence of more than one extra copy of X chromosome as well. So you may be asking me now, Dr. Robiul, why is there an extra copy of X chromosome in this individual with Kleinfelter syndrome? And to answer that question, the first thing that you have to remember is that Kleinfelter syndrome is not an inherited disorder. So although this is a genetic disorder, but this is not an inherited disorder. It happens due to some random errors that occurred during formation of our gametes, that is during formation of ovum or sperm. Recall that ovum, sperm, these are gametes and they are formed by meiotic cell division. But sometimes there may be random error in meiotic cell division and there may be an error called non-disjunction. Due to this error, there will be unequal distribution of X chromosome among the daughter cells. So there will be formation of a gamete that will have more than one X chromosome or there may be formation of a gamete that will have an extra X chromosome. Okay, so when such gamete that is containing an extra X chromosome is fertilized, there will be chance of development of an individual with karyotypes like this and that will result in development of Kleinfelter syndrome and we will talk about in details when we are talking about pathogenesis of Kleinfelter syndrome. So in that section we will also know more about the mechanism of Kleinfelter syndrome. So now that we have said some introductory points regarding Kleinfelter syndrome, now it's time to define Kleinfelter syndrome. Okay, I hope you are still with me. You didn't run away just like my students do when I try to teach them definitions of pathology. I even have to show them teddy bears or cartoon characters to keep them calm. So look, I am also showing you a cartoon character. I am showing you a minion. So don't run away. Look at the minion, stay calm because I will tell you the definition now and I'm sure you will understand the definition clearly. 
So, how can we define Klinefelter syndrome? As written in your textbook, Klinefelter syndrome can be defined as male hypogonadism that occurs due to presence of two or more X chromosomes and one or more Y chromosome. Okay, so that wasn't that hard, right? If you had listened to the introductory points that I had just mentioned, I am sure you have understood the definition. But one thing you have to remember, you may be asking me, Dr. Robiul, in this karyotype we can see two X chromosomes. Sometimes you said that there may be more than two X chromosomes, there may be three, four X chromosomes. So why is this individual still showing male phenotype? And the answer is due to the presence of Y chromosome. Always remember, no matter how many X chromosome an individual has, if there is also presence of Y chromosome, the individual will be phenotypically a male individual. Okay? So now that we have talked about some introductory points regarding Klinefelter syndrome and we have also defined the disease. Now it's time to know about the incidence of Klinefelter syndrome. The incidence is 1 in about 660 live-born males. Okay, so I am repeating the incidence again for my students. It is 1 in about 660 live-born males. So now that we have talked about the incidence of Klinefelter syndrome, now we will move on and talk about the various karyotypes. And as you can see in the whiteboard, I have already written some examples. Now always remember in 90% of the cases, the karyotype of Klinefelter syndrome will be 47XXY. So we can see from this karyotype that here, there is presence of one extra copy of X chromosome. In other cases, the karyotype will show mosaic pattern. Now, what do we mean by this mosaic pattern? It means here we will have mixture of cell population. For example, in this karyotype, we can see that uh, one cell population has the karyotype of 46XY and the other cell population has the karyotype 47XXY but both population are present in the same individual okay so that's why this is an example of mosaic pattern and this is another example of mosaic pattern that will also lead to Klinefelter syndrome. So now that we have talked about the various karyotypes of Klinefelter syndrome now we will move on and talk about the pathogenesis. In your textbook you will see that two mechanisms are described. One mechanism is uneven dosage compensation and the other mechanism is related to gene that encodes androgen receptor. So let's talk about these two mechanisms one by one. So the first mechanism is uneven dosage compensation. In order to understand this mechanism, first we must know what do we mean by dosage compensation. It is a process by which organisms equalize gene expression between members of male and female sex. For example, we know that in humans, a normal female individual has 2X chromosomes in her diploid cells and a normal male individual has one X chromosome and one Y chromosome in his diploid cells. So to equalize gene expression, we see that in case of females, one X chromosome from every pair of X chromosome is kept transcriptionally silent. Okay, so this is also known as X chromosome inactivation. So, in case of females, in every pair of X chromosomes, one X chromosome is kept transcriptionally active and the other one is kept transcriptionally silent.
However, a very interesting thing to know is that even inside the inactivated X chromosome, some genes still remain active. That means they have escaped X chromosome inactivation. And uh, as we will later see, they will have a very important role in the pathogenesis of Klinefelter syndrome. So, what is happening in Klinefelter syndrome? In Klinefelter syndrome, there are extra copies of X chromosome. Okay, for example, if we consider this karyotype, the karyotype of this individual is 47XXY. And just like the normal female individual, one X chromosome here will remain active and all other extra X chromosomes will be transcriptionally inactive. Okay, so that is the rule of X chromosome inactivation, which is also happening here as well, that only one X chromosome is kept transcriptionally active and all other copies of X chromosome is kept transcriptionally silent. However, even inside the inactivated X chromosomes, some genes will remain active. That means they have escaped X chromosome inactivation and overexpression of those genes will lead to disease and in case of Klinefelter syndrome, uh, they will lead to hypogonadism. Okay, so we can see that uh, here there are extra copies of X chromosomes and as a result of uneven dosage compensation, there is overexpression of genes and that will lead to Klinefelter syndrome. So that was in short about the first mechanism. The second mechanism involves gene that encodes androgen receptor. Recall that testosterone mediates its effects by binding with androgen receptor. And the gene that encodes androgen receptor is located inside the X chromosome. And the thing is, this gene also has highly polymorphic CAG repeats. Now, what do we mean by this term CAG repeat? It is an example of trinucleotide repeat. And in case of the gene that encodes androgen receptor, the gene contains variable number of CAG repeat in its various alleles. For example, some alleles of this gene will have short CAG repeats, whereas other alleles of this androgen receptor gene will have longer CAG repeats. Now, the androgen receptor that is encoded from the androgen alleles with short CAG repeat will be more sensitive to androgen and the androgen receptor that is encoded from the androgen receptor allele with long CAG repeats will be less sensitive. And a very interesting thing to remember is that the X chromosome that contained the androgen receptor gene with short CAG repeat is selectively or preferentially inactivated. So in a sense we will see that in Klinefelter syndrome androgen receptors with high sensitivity for androgen will be lost and androgen receptors with less sensitivity for androgen or testosterone will be produced. So this will also exacerbate hypogonadism.
So this was in short about the pathogenesis of Klinefelter syndrome and this concludes part one of this series. In the second part of this series we will finish our discussion by talking about the diagnosis, the clinical features and management of Klinefelter syndrome. Okay, so that's all for today. Until next time, take care and stay blessed. Thank you.